All right. Good morning, everyone. It's Sammy, office manager. We are going to have a training today. So today's training is talk about listing, residential listing. So recently, I received a lot of the phone call or help from our agent. Some agent said, oh, I want to sell my own property. How are we going to start? So yesterday, I have a few agents. Uh, from the online through uh through online like uh, you know Zoom because some agent may be a little bit far away, so through the Zoom or some agent come to the office, you know help them quickly go through the listing. How to prepare the listing for residential listing by using web form. And uh, few step. The first step. Uh, I will say is prepare the forms, which form you should use. The second step, second step is how to prepare the MLS data information. And the next step is how to set up the related, like a showing, uh, showing instruction and other things. So let's uh, maybe just uh, try to use one of the RFT as a sample. Let's see how to start. Okay, so. I will use one of the sample. Let's just say there's one buyer, oh, sorry, one seller, maybe yourself, maybe a seller, maybe a friend, anyone. So they told you, they said, oh, I want to myself sell my property. And then you have to, to do is listing presentation. Listing presentation, usually we have to prepare the information before we go to the seller's property. And in our office website, I hope you know how to log in the office website. It's homelifelandmark.com. And from homelifelandmark.com, you go to resource. Under resource, we see agent portal. And uh, once you log in to agent portal, you will see office resource. Under the marketing resource, marketing resource, you will see listing presentation. So this listing presentation is when you go to the seller's property, you have to prepare this listing presentation. Okay, I will download it. Maybe quickly just take a look. We don't go any details because we don't have time for that. Okay, so this is today's topic. We are going to talk about the residential listing uh, by using matrix and the web form. And the listing presentation will be here. Oh, I think the problem is because the screen share, uh, share screen, you cannot see the PowerPoint. It's go to another app. But however, so I'm maybe I will don't take the waste of time. And uh, you just download from Office website. You will see this is a very professional design. And just plug in your information, maybe your name. Uh, whatever information you want to put there. So that is listing presentation to the seller. After the listing presentation, so we are going to prepare the listing paperwork. So before the paperwork, we have to find out listing previous information. I, let's just say there's a property. The seller they said I want to sell my property. This is the address freehold. So I will go to residential freehold. I want to check is there any history for this listing in the MLS. Uncheck active, that means everything. So the property is, I will use this one as a sample, 11, uh, S-E-A-F-O-R-T-H, C4. You can use any property, but this is the property I just wanted to use for sample training purpose. And uh, you will see there's eight results. You know, sometimes the agent will put uh, the more information like area, municipality, the reason is street, same street in different city, they have maybe have the same street. So probably going to save the time. I'm going to put a markham because this is a markham. So once you put a markham, there's only two property. Maybe this is exactly property. So when I go to results, so the results will show the listing, you know, the listing history. And uh, I will see the most recently, you can check by contact, contract date. 
you see the contract data one is the last week. That means uh, this is a listing. We just uh, you know, done the listing last week. Before the listing, before this listing, there's only one result. This is the result from MLS. Maybe they have result. Maybe they have any information found from MLS. But uh, however, we usually can find the information from MLS. If yes, we will go to more, get more information. So we know the property looks like, we know how many bedroom, we know how many parking, how many, uh, like, you know, the room measurement from previous listing they have. And uh, also we want to check from the geo warehouse for more details. But before that, we will go to paperwork. So what kind of the paperwork we need to prepare the listing. So I will go to tools, new, open the new tab. And then I will go to web form. So now is our first step. Before we go to the first step, we just prepare the information. So I will go to create transaction, create a transaction, and I will use a street name and a number as a transaction name. So you can use any name because this is for the training purpose. I just use it for the training word, wording. And the template, we, our office, we have all kinds of the template. So this template is for listing, freehold listing for sale, 01E. If you want to list the property for condo, you can go to 02D, condo townhouse listing. For the rest, you know, we have a for lease, commercial, so you can just find the right template. So we go to 01E, freehold listing. And after that, lots of the agent made a mistake. They trying to get more information. So that's why they cannot create. Let, I will give you the sample. Maybe they said, oh, this is a Toronto. Maybe I will put a Toronto port. And I don't have MLS. Maybe just create, they see, oh, you need the MLS number. So remember, don't put any information other than first and the last. You see, we have extra. That means that this is a mandatory. Other than this mandatory, don't put any other information. Just a name, template, and a create. Done. Once you create, we go to forms on the right. Forms. And you see all of those forms will be used for the listing. This is the office we already help us uh, create the template. So we need a listing agreement. We need MLS data form. We need a fin track ID form. We need a recall info guide. And uh, for this one, MLS property information form. This is only for the R, uh, for the uh, ISTO. It's not a travel member. So usually, if you are the travel member, I will suggest you just delete MLS property information. Just delete that form. And uh, for the next one, seller's direction for the property and the offer. This is for open offer or closed offer. Because right now we don't see any open offer yet. So I still suggest you to delete if you don't want to use an open offer. And the next one is the seller's disclosure latent defect. If the seller told you there is something they know uh, latent defect, you need to keep it. Otherwise, you can just delete. And the next one is a property information checklist. So this is for the, you know, the new, very, very new. We should go uh, through every single detail, like a checklist, because you need to ask seller. Is a hotter water tank is owned, rent, or leased? How much amount? Because you don't want it on the last minutes before the closing, the seller told you, oh, the hotter water tank maybe is a leased, but uh, you think it's owned. Furnace, you know, the furnace is the most of the confusion part. And someone they spend the money for lease, the high efficiency furnace. But usually they forget to tell you, the sellers forget to tell you, you think this is their own, but actually it's not. So those, you know, the information is 
we need to double check, making sure everything is correctly. You don't want to get a confused, uh, confusion on the closing. So and anything we will make a mistake, usually some buyer, they will ask money for the uh, compensation. Okay, so you can keep this form. This is no need seller signature, but you can double check. Also, if this property is for yourself, like maybe you own the property, maybe your family member, and maybe your you know, spouse family member, we need to do this closure. This closure is only for related blood or marriage within three generations. Okay, so if the property is yours, you need to do this closure. We search this closure as 160. Sorry, 161. 160 is when you're buying the property. And 161 is when you're doing sell the property, this position. Only if this is a property related. If not, you don't need a disclosure. So this is only for training purpose. I just add one extra information. Maybe I will add one. Let's go from the first form. We only need a one, two, three, four. If you have a need a disclosure, if you don't, you don't need a disclosure, we only need a one, two, three forms. Let's go to the first one, listing agreement. And the seller's name, we can check from the geo warehouse. You see the previous listing, and we just click geo warehouse. If the lead property is not listed on the MLS, we can directly go to geo warehouse from here. This is under tools, tours, and go to geo warehouse. If you go to geo warehouse, they will have one count. Every year we have a 2000 history you can view it from the geo warehouse. And sometimes people say, oh, I viewed a lot. I don't know how many left over. So you can quickly click account and my account. You will see you, I, I already used 45. There's a still have lots. Okay, so this is a property I found out from the Geo Warehouse. This is a seller's name. I will copy and put in the MLS. Listing to sellers and the salesperson. This is my name, salesperson name, and this is the property address. I will quickly to type. And when you want to put on the MLS, so this is a little bit of a tricky part. Lots of people say, oh, I may prepare the listing today. Can I put a, this listing on the MLS maybe next week? Let's say maybe next Friday. Yes, you can do it. So we just put the commencing day. Commencing day is the date you want to put on the MLS date. So we can prepare the information today, 29. We can ask a seller to send all the paperwork today, 29, but the listing can go to MLS on next week in a future date. You cannot go to back date. So in the back date, only one, two, three, four days you can back. So no one want to go back because the DOM will be a more. It's not a zero. Usually on the day on market is a fresh new. So let's say the next Friday, we will be able to put on the MLS. So I will put July 5th. I will choose July 5th and uh, put on the market 12 o'clock midnight. And uh, when is the expiry date? Usually minimum is 60 days. July, that means I will go to August, September. Usually people say, oh, July 5th. Maybe I will go September 5th. No, usually we go end of the month. Of course, you can go to September 5 or September 6. It's okay. But usually we go end 
of the month after two months. But uh, you know, 60 days is a minimum. It depends on the market. Sometimes the market is not really good. We may go a little bit further, maybe three months. So for this case, I will not go, go only two months. I will go three or four months, get a little bit longer time. So for the October 31st is the expiry date. And for the price, the price I will leave on the last because usually you, you, if you talk to your seller client or buyer client, if you talk about the price, you should al you always stuck there for a few hours. So that's why I always suggest you talk to the seller. Let's wait, let's put the price on the last. We discuss at the very end. So let's keep continue going. For the commission, we know we give it to 2.5, it's called operating brokerage. And the holdover is 90 days. For the total commission, number two, the first part is a total commission. Usually I will put maybe 4.5%, even we still have an agent, they put 5%. If the seller have no concern, no issue, we just leave 5%, 2.5 to cooperating, 2.5 to listing. If the seller they said, oh, can you do a little bit less? Maybe you can cross out, write down 4.5. Or, oh, you know, sometimes you just write down 4.5 at the beginning. And some people may say, oh, this is my own property, my best friend's property, my uh, parents' property. I don't want to charge the fees, commissions. How can I do it? So if that's in case, I will leave here blank. And this is the total commission, 2.5. That means our office, we only charge seller 2.5% plus transaction fees. That means you will not get any commission, but the seller will pay the transaction fee. Maybe your transaction fee is 500, uh, 600, whatever the plan based on your own commission plan. So you will not receive any commission. 2.5 go to call operating brokerage and the office will charge the fee, the seller will pay it. So this is in case you want to sell your own property, maybe your friend, anyone property, you don't want to charge the fee. Okay, let's put the normal situation, maybe 4.5% is a total commission, 2% to yourself, 2.5 to the call operating agent. So that's it. This form is really simple. If you've never done this form, you can try. It's a really, really easy, simple form for listing agreement. And uh, we have a designate. Before it's called the office uh, listing. It's a 200, but now it's a 271. If you are the agent in the business for many years, sometimes we get asked, it said, why I cannot find the 200 form? 200 is a listing agreement. But uh, in this year, uh, the area they have update to designate. Designate that means uh, the agent, you, the client is your own client. Office designate as a listing agent to serve this client. Without the, the client concern, there's other agent in the office cannot touch this client. Before the form 200, that means the client is belong to office. You are the agent on behalf of the office to take care of this client. So office have the right to assign any agent to take care of this plant. So that is a difference. Anyway, so right now the our office, we have the policy, every agent, every client is designate to represent. Okay, we go to the last page. Lots of people always confuse. What's the schedule A? Do I need to write down anything in a schedule A? So leave blank. Before we don't have a schedule A, this is only 271, they have one extra page, schedule A. So if you have anything like, uh, you know, the uh, maybe you will see the seller will take care of the uh, staging, seller will pay the staging, and then once the property has completely sold, uh, the listing agent will reimburse the staging fee to the seller, or whatever, you know, you want that to uh, mention, you can put in the schedule A. Otherwise, you can leave blank. 
So that is schedule A, that is the listing agreement, very simple. And we go next form, it's much, much more simple than the schedule, than the listing agreement. We leave the 290, because 290, I will explain you why we leave this form for now. We go next one is a fun track. Fun track form, maybe I will don't go this form because we have a training for the fun track. And the next one is Rico info guide. The fun track, they don't need a seller signature. We only 271, seller need to sign it. Rico info guide, seller need to sign it. And the disclosures, the agent need to sign, the seller they don't need to sign. In the most of the normal situation, we only need a leasing agreement for the client and we need a, a RICO info guide. So RICO info guide is a new form. Big four is called a working with realtor A10. So lots of the agent, they recently they are uh, is a senior agent. They said, where is the working with the realtor A10? I cannot find. So the RICO info guide replaced A10 working with the realtor. And uh, this is the name, agent's name, and the brokerage name. So your signature, the seller signature, the seller signature will be here. Done. That's it. And uh, there's one form. It's a very, very uh, complicated form is called MLS date info form. Before we need to go this form to fill all the information. So I will talk about that before. We prepare the listing agreement. We prepare the MLS data. I know you are going to get a heartache. You see this, how many informations, like all the highlights, the red, Highlight is a mandatory. You see, this is a mandatory. And a lot of the agent get a heartache when they see this form. They say, Oh man, how can I fill this form? It's too complicated. So, anyway, right now we leave this form for now. We don't use this form. Uh, it's not that we don't use, we have another way. Before we fill this form, we need to go to MLS add edit, do one more time. Just waste your time, duplicate your work. And now we just leave this one for now. Okay, we've finished the form, listing agreement, very simple. We finished the form, recall information, very simple. And then now we are going to prepare the MLS data. So MLS data, we go to MLS listing. From MLS from the here, add edit matrix. You see the add edit on the top. Okay, so before I open the form, I see the agent, uh, so the so the hair, so the hair. Sorry, maybe I pronounced that wrong. And uh, you ask your question, why not less than two months? So the Rico M, no, sorry, the MLS trap, MLS rule, they have a set the listing cannot be less than sixty days. So if you have a seller said, I'll only give you a week. If you can sold, take it. If you cannot sold it, don't take it. So you need to tell the seller and based on the trap MLS rule, the listing can not be less than 60 days. Okay, let's continue, go add edit. Yeah, if you have any question, maybe you can type in here because you, when we waiting for the open up, New page, we can check the questions. All right. Remember, this is add edit. For most of the new agent, if you cannot see this form, this is a need uh, authorization, need a permission. That means you are really, really, really new. So you need to uh, let me know, let Tony know. We need to give you the permission. You can add a listing for the very, very new agent. If you're not a new agent, you suppose you can see add listing, added listing. So from here, we finish the form from web form. And now we are going to prepare the MLS data form. So we go to previous listing, 
So this is the listing we found from MIS. Even the listing is very old, 1998, you know, 1998 listing. And then we copy MLS number. And uh, we go to here, add listing, click edit listing. They have one, two, three, four tab. First one, add listing. Second one, edit listing. So we go to edit listing, we paste MLS number. Once you paste MLS number, you see the information history will pull out from the MLS database. And then now we just use the column listing. You see on the left side, column listing. That means we column the previous listing from MLS. And we have a brokerage information. We need to find the agent. If it, this is your system, you will see your name will be here. And uh, this is a residential freehold, detach property address, street name, and everything is good. I just go to create. So those information is exactly same as this form. So now you know why I'm not asking you to prepare this form first. Because when you waste the time prepare this form, you have to come here to do this one more time. That means you just spend the double time to prepare the MLS listing. So now we just spend the time from here. If the listing is a previous list, we go to column listing. If there's not a listing before, we can create a new listing. So this is only do one time job. Okay, let's quickly go all of those information. Looks like a very complicated, but if you go through, I will go through with you once maybe you can feel very easy. So the row number, double check. We can check it from the MLS. Uh, the Geo Warehouse, you see Geo Warehouse. This is the row number. Uh, usually I will copy, maybe the previous is wrong, but whatever, whatever reason, so maybe I will just paste. And the pin number, you see pin is not mandatory. You see the extra, there's no extra. That means it's not mandatory. But uh, usually I will still suggest you use a pin because of some mortgage agent, the lawyer, they want a pin. So if we put the pin number on the MLS, they will really appreciate. So I go to Geo Warehouse. I scroll down. Here, you see the pin number. This is the property pin. I just copy the pin number. And the next one, the system automatically come out. Area, York, municipality, market, community, Unionville. Street number, street name, abbreviation, and also the host code. Friend on, you know, friend on, maybe you can check. This is the, you, the house is located on the east, east of this street. So that's one, that's why it's front on east. Some people always get the confused. We are only see the lot. Where's the lot? The main entrance lot. Look at the, which side of the street. And uh, this is the legal descrip description, which is a go to MLS. Uh, sorry, go to Geo Warehouse. We double check. Legal. Here, this is the legal description. We can always copy, make sure it's the most new update. Yeah, it's exactly the same, but uh, only the, they put a lot of birds, but this is a lot at a lot. Okay, next one, lot front and a lot of dips. So we will go to Geo Warehouse. You see here, we have a lot size. The lot size is a 129. Maybe it's so small, I will make it larger. See here's 129, 129, 72, 52, 87, 52, 87. This is a regular lot. We just use a, this number. 52, uh, one. I will copy, I will bring here.
12970, and this is 50 to 87, but the coat is a feet. Usually we use a feet for the lot front. And in case some property is not regular lot, so we should always use the less one based on the trap ML as a rule. We shouldn't use the longer one. So remember, if this is irregular lot, we should always use shorter one. Okay, keep going. The street, everything is good. Waterfront, this is not a waterfront. And the intersection, Warden Highway 7. Okay, good. So maybe I will go next. That means they will lead me to the next uh, information. Oh, there's another quick easy way, just click validate. If you click, they will show you where you should put the information. Where is the information missing? So the price, I will leave at the last. And the HST included in, and the tax, 20 tax number, tax. Let me check how much the tax. You will see the tax, property tax will be here, 2027, 9145. This is a Jew warehouse. They have a tax information here. So I will put a nine, one, four, five. And the tax is 2023. However, I will ask you, please double check. With the seller, can you bring the CT uh, tax bill to me? Because I need to have a very accurate number. Otherwise, this number maybe is not 100% accurate. So next one, contract date. Contract date is uh, we're going to put the market July 5th and the expire date will be end of the October. And the position date, position remark, you see this is a two. We have to choose either one, position date or remark. If the seller told you, you know, I must close this property maybe July, uh, April, uh, August 15. So you can use the position date. This is exactly the date your seller looking for. So in the real case, even we know the seller have exactly date, we usually don't put in the position date. We just put a position remark. Let's just say seller will prefer for at least two months. That means we put a 60 slash TBA, that means we need a seller looking for two months or to be arranged, to be announced. And the hold over 90 days. So you need to talk to a seller and see when they want to give the property to the buyer. That's a position remark. The seller's name. Remember we have uh, from the Geo Warehouse, we can copy the seller's name. We can put it here and then we go next. The next is also have a link. This is not a link. And the foundation, most of the property is concrete, the roof. This is really new before they don't have this uh, roof. Okay, this problem. When I click, the mouse will not respond. Okay, Pingo. Awesome. And the driving, they have a two garage. They have a two parking space in the outside. And the total, they have a four parking. The water is a municipal. The pool is swimming pool they don't have. Solar system is the city solar system. And the special destination, everything only here, the age. Because the listing, when they list, is only six to 15 years. But this is not a mandatory. So I will rather leave blank for the age, because I can find the property built 1989 here. Oh, you want to do the calculation and then write down what the, what's the approximate age. But because this is not a mandatory, so I rather leave blank. The waterfront is not, I will go in here. And uh, this is from previous listing agent, they already they already have those information. I just use it for, for interior feature. You know, if you can check, there's a lot selection. 
you can double check, make sure which one is the best fit this listing. But uh, you know, usually we just put the other or none for this property. And the family room uh, is blank. Uh, yeah, everything is good. Okay, sorry, I have a emergency call. Okay, sorry about that. Let's keep continue going. And uh, those is uh, finished. The next one is the room. The room is already done from the previous agent, but uh, we have to double check. You see, this is the previous agent. They did a very good job. We just uh, double check with the seller and uh, make sure the living room and uh, quickly, you know, random to check the measurement, make sure there's no huge mistake. If there's a very less, Less mistake, it's okay, but don't have a huge. And maybe the seller, they have a renovate. Maybe the seller, they have a finished basement. We have to double check, make sure it's, uh, everything is new and update. The comments. Okay, so comments is blank. The reason is previous agent, they have a comment, but you know we cannot copy. We should use write down to our own or new comments. And uh, also the, you know, extra broker. So this one, uh, maybe I will show you usually what we are going to do. So we can plant a remark. Usually we will use the neighbor, the neighbor's listing. Uh, maybe sort map search. I know we shouldn't waste the time from here. Okay, I will check the, you know, the neighbor within uh, 200, 300 meters. And uh, this is the same listing. And uh, I will find from those listings, you know, they write down the really good, really, really good. So, I will double check, make sure I agree, you know, the only few sentences they like, uh, they wrote. I cannot copy everything because this is not exactly the same property. So if they introduce this neighborhood, it's really good. I will put, you know, copy few. Like they say, uh, Hop High School, Park View, Union View. Yeah, I think this is the one we really Everything is good. Maybe I will copy, put here. And uh, before I submit, I have to make sure the school is a, a primary school, high school is the right school. Otherwise, you know, I give the wrong information, uh, misleading the buyer. So I will quickly go TDSB. Oh no, it's a. York region, why district school board? And uh, I will go to school, found my school. And uh, then I will go to find your school now. I will put a street number. This is American, I will submit. So this is the P primary, uh, primary school, Parkville, that's right. And uh, the high school, Unionville, that's right. Okay, so once you double check, you can just uh, leave the information here. And uh, then you can go to the listing, other listings. Check, see if there's other sentence you think is good for your listing. Just copy one sentence. 
don't copy more than 50 or 75. Otherwise, the agent may be complaining you. Okay, once you finish, so I will suggest you go to chart GPT, copy those to the chart GPT, and tell them I want makeup for the Toronto MLS listing remark for client up to 2000 characters. So the chart GPT will help you to make up very beautiful sentence. You can copy and paste here. Okay, so next one is uh, inclusion. I'm not going to <laughs> show the exactly, but I hope you know how to do it by yourself. Inclusion usually is a store, bridge, building, washer, washer and uh, dryer, or electronic light, ELFS, or window covering. So maybe there's a double check with the seller, see if they have other things, like maybe, maybe chandelier they don't want to include in, you can write down the in exclusion. So that is whatever they want to include in, just write down here. And then last one for the you know rental item. If you check with the seller, they said, oh, hot water tank is rental. So maybe I will put it here, hot water tank is rental. If you know how much, maybe you can write down the amount. If not, just write down here. If the furnace air condition is rental, you can write down here. And the last one is a remark for the broker. That means um, uh, you need to tell the other agent. Usually we, we will see uh, lock, box, easy showing, attach, schedule B with offer. If uh, offer, if any, if have, will be reviewed on July, whatever date, usually uh, a week, seven days, after seven days, 15, 20, 24, at 7 p.m. Regis, offer at 6, at 5 p.m. Seller right reserve the right to receive MTV offer. So that is usually. Reserve the right. Okay, so usually you just write down the communicate with other agent. See, maybe lockbox, maybe how to show in. If a tenant, you need a 24 hours notice. And when you want to prepare the uh, receive the offer, it's a multiple offer. So if you're not sure, you can always, always check with the other listing. You see the other listing agent, how they are going to write. We can uh we can just learn from them is it showing yeah that is very easy for the uh comments and the next one we go to other uh this is the agent phone number and the commission to the cooperating brokerage and the SPIS, no seller property information statement. PDF, yes. Address, yes. Distribute the internet, yes. After it's by, uh, you know, the allowed to advertise, yes. And uh, contact the after expiry, no. The occupancy is owner showing system. So that is the from others. Like, uh, you know, usually this is the, we choose like this. 
if you're not sure, maybe uh, you just can maybe take a screenshot. You know, usually we just uh, use this uh, sample, like uh, we put everything internet, everything DDF uh, address, yes, only the contact after expiration is no. And uh, virtual tour, if you order the virtual tour, you can copy the virtual tour is unbranded. Unbranded, that means that there's no information for the listing agents information, you can put unbranded. And uh, next, photo. Photo is you can upload a photo. See, there's a photo, 40 photos. You can take a photo by yourself, or you can take a, ask the professional people to take a photo for you. Usually the virtual tour company, they take a photo maybe $150 more or less. A professional photo they will take, and also they have a virtual tour link, unbranded page, website. And the last one is attachment. Attachment is for the schedule B. And we can go to MLS, we go to the transaction, and in the transaction, you'll see there's a called document. From the document, we will find the schedule B, and we can download schedule B. Once you download the schedule B to the office, uh, to, sorry, to, to your computer, and then we go back, we use upload, we use the download, schedule B, upload, and then choose this is the schedules. Okay, done. And then now remember there's only one information left is the price. So now we are before we just go to the next, we just going to see how much we should list this property. And we go to Toronto MLS, and we go to map. You see, this is a map. We just go maybe uh, within 400 meters in the center of the 400 meters. We want to check what happened in the neighbors, how much they sold. So that's why we want to find out how much the property should be worth. And then I will go to sold recently, maybe uh, nine, 100, maybe 90 days, three months. And for the detach, for the two park, two garage. And uh, let's see the result. We have a few property, one, two, three, four. And we wanna make sure the property is really similar, similar value. So we go check the, it's uh, out. We go check the property tax. Remember the tax property tax is 9,145. So the tax, we will find a very similar property tax listing. 9,100. So this is a little bit more. This is a, uh, very close. This is a little bit less. And uh, we have uh, three properties really close. And uh, then we will quickly go quick CMA. From the quick CMA, we will find out, you know, the property average, average the price may be worth $2.5 million, maybe median or middle because we only have a three. If we have more, uh, we should get them maybe a more flexible result. But anyway, this property is supposed to be worth $2.5 million. So there's two options. One, we go with the higher price, 2.5, 2.0, maybe 2.6, and let a buyer agent to send the offer. We are going to negotiate less. Another option, we go multiple offer. We see from the previous listing in the recently, you know, all the listings go 1.9, 1.9, and the property they sold 2.4, 2.5. So we may consider those two options and the letter seller know. So first option, we will go to the 2.5, maybe a little bit more, 
and uh, put on the market and let's see what's going on. Second option, we go less, we do the multiple offer. So that is really depends on the seller, how they are going to do it. So maybe just talk to a seller and see if, if they, whether they wanted to do the multiple offer. Okay, so finally, maybe the seller said, I wanted to go with multiple offer, 199, 999, and uh, just list is the price and uh, wait for the a week. We will do the multiple offer. Okay, so now we are going to get everything done and uh, we go validate. Remember, validate, there's uh, no any missing information. You will see the submit, submit the button here. Once we click a submit, this listing will be live. So if you are the using the training right now, remember, don't click because this is for training purpose. If this is the real listing, you may click submit. But remember one thing, we are going to put on the market at July 5th. So now if you click, you won't go to market unless until you click on the July 5th. So we go to preview, preview save a draft, preview, and then generate. And then this is the MLS data. Remember the MLS data we have here. This is a complicated form. And here we have a complicated form. But this form is going to one, only do one time. And you can ask a seller to sign here. So we download this form to download. Oh, MLS, DATA, DRAFT. So MLS data draft. And then we go to the listing uh, web form. We need a one, need a seller to sign. The second one is a recall info guide and no other information. And we go to basket. When we choose the two forms, go to basket, use the authentic sign. From the authentic sign. From the authentic sign, we need a one more form. We go to document, we need to add document, upload, just click upload, and we go find the MLS draft. So we have this agreement, we have, we have MLS draft, and also we have a recall info guide. So now we will ask a seller to sign it. So go to the signer, go to add from transaction, and the first one, you as the listing agent. Next one, the seller. Second, the seller. We select. And because of the seller, they missing information. They will have a, you know, a learn. So this is the seller's email address. Maybe for the training, I will put my. So I will put my email address as like, a, just a, you know, pretend this is a seller. I will go next, save it. Same thing for another seller. Okay, so listing agent, seller, everybody is here. And then now we are going to double check, make sure the signing uh, document is uh, properly. Because this is MIS listing, not exclusive. I will take exclusive out. And uh, seller initial, agent initial, listing rate, everything is good. But the only here I'm missing the remember the price uh, because I'm missing. So I will quickly to correct uh, to write down the price, I will go text box. I will write down listing price is a 1.999. And 
And here I will write down 1 million 999. And uh, yeah, just keep continue going. And this is does not, that means that once the listing expired, are you allowed other agent to contact your seller? So usually we will say does not. And also the agent insurance signature missing, I will change to agent, which means my information. The computer is really slow now. And I put signature here, delete the date. Okay, so this is the seller. We need the seller to sign it. First the seller. Second the seller. Okay, so all the seller has been signed. And here is also the signature for the seller. So I won't, won't show you, you know how to do it. But anyway, this is the uh, for the authentic sign. Once you finish the signing, you go next and you will receive the signing document. So that is the step. Like, you know, first is we prepare the web form for the listing. The second step, prepare the MLS data. The last step, we submit the listing. Once your listing submit, we need to go to Broker Bay to set up. So for the Broker Bay set up, maybe I will not going to uh, take the demonstration here. And because today is the last information, I hope you can learn first one, how to prepare the listing by using the right form, format, template. Second one, how to get a listing draft from the add edit, get the draft done. So if you know those two information, two things, you are ready to do the listing. Otherwise, you know, some people just uh, stuck there, they said, how we are going to start. Okay, so maybe we can stop here. It's already take an hour and uh, see if we have any questions, feel free to ask.